Because she's got a lot of energy. Mama puts. She's got a great brand, and she's doing something for you. And uh, that's how it is with a lot of us too. We have uh, individual businesses that we are building. But the idea is we cannot do so much without the network. Like John mentioned in that video, and in Kechi, when they got here, they were lost. They didn't have the social support structure. They couldn't get people to assist them with a few things. I had a lot of friends who were going to the UK when I was coming up my master's. And they were like, what are you going to do in France? You know, there are a lot of barriers to coming here. But it's important that when we come here, we're able to find people who can lead us and guide us and help us win. Uh, just last year, we had a pact with Campus France. And uh, what, what they do now, when, every, when students come into France from Nigeria, they quickly do the access to receive them. Uh, last time we received about 22 students from Kano. And when we receive them, we dispatch them, we connect them with the network of people in the north, Nantes, Leon, all of the places. And it proves to be very, very tactful. So uh, that's it. Um, beyond the student, beyond all of the, um, um, all of the things we have said, we thought it wise that we have a knowledge sharing platform in the spirit of this event, which is about economic empowerment in a sense, economic empowerment for companies, but also economic empowerment for our individual ourselves. So we thought that it would be good to have a round table where we have successful Nigerian entrepreneurs in France who will come share their stories, uh, share the landmines that we should avoid when we try to navigate the economic waters in France, and also we we'll share the things to look out for and how to find a competitive edge I want to think that if you have a business and you are Anglo-Saxon as it were, you should be able to have a competitive advantage somehow. So the fact that you are different in this kind of environment can be a plus also if you know how to, if you know um, how to use that to your strength. So we'll be calling a few persons who will do two minutes, three minutes. Just a summary. How was it when you came? How did you manage to navigate? And um, how did you make the success? Uh, how did you manage to make as much success as you you've made up to this moment in time? It does. It's not sector specific. Some of us are econo uh, entrepreneurs in different sectors. So uh, we just like you to share experience, share st uh, stories, and so we can learn. And also after the section, thirty plus minutes or so, we would have uh, because the next round people starts at three thirty. We'll have uh, question and answers and. Um, will be done with this section. If we've not had the time to network in the last 24 hours from when the event started and up to this morning, this is also a time to get to know some people you've not straight, you've not uh, um, reached out to before now. And then you, from here you get to know what everybody does and you can connect along lines of mutual interest. So, um, how do we go? Three minutes up. Let's try to moderate it. The theme is economic empowerment for our members. So what's your story along the economic track? How did you manage to survive? And um, yes. So who goes first? Dr. Iga, I think you should go first. But very funny that you came, you came as early as, you came before time. So thank you. So you do three minutes. Just a bit summary. OK. My name is Emmanuel Iga. I am the founder and uh, chief executive officer of a company called uh, Phobos International. Uh, comp the company is over 10 years old uh, in France. It's also registered in Nigeria. Uh, the company is particularly known for uh, its activities in uh, trying to connect uh, Nigeria with uh, France. Uh, not only just Nigeria with France, but uh, let's take it up to the uh, Europe, Africa level. Uh, because we are also dealing with countries like uh, Angola, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Uganda, etc. Uh, Phobos uh, is interested in uh, serving as a bridge uh, between uh, partners who don't know uh, generally uh, one another very well. The partners in Africa, partners in France, uh, we have a situation whereby there is a big confidence gap between uh, investors here, between technical partners here, and potential partners in Nigeria, in Africa, that need the services of these investors and partners here. Uh, so we try to bridge 
this uh, uh, confidence gap, uh, bringing people together, and because of the knowledge that we have of both sides of, let me say, the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Phobos uh, International uh, in Nigeria is uh, particularly known for the publication called the Nigeria Handbook, uh, which we initiated, and uh, we got the Federal Ministry of Information to join us as partner to produce this book uh, that, uh, let me say, promotes Nigeria uh, and tries to sell its positive image because we are in the period, uh, people think there's nothing good that is coming out of that country called Nigeria except petrol. But we are trying to prove through this book that there is a lot more in all the sectors of activities, development, etc. What um, we have been able to do very, very exceptional this year too, uh, was to bring Nigeria for the first time to participate in the International Agricultural Fair in Paris here, which is, I think, the biggest agricultural fair in the world. Nigeria is trying to open up uh, to the world to try to export its agricultural pro pro produce, and that is the way to go. We cannot, of course, continue with the monoculture uh, economy based on petrol, giving us 90% of our uh, revenues. So uh, we thought we should go in that direction. I've been in France for a very long time. I did my studies here from undergraduate up to doctorate. And, uh, and then I worked here. I went back. I went to do my youth call in Nigeria. So if you want to appoint me uh, minister in Nigeria, <laughs> rest assured, there will be no scandal about my national youth service call. Uh, so I, I have been long here, and uh, uh, that experience uh, helped me a lot uh, to understand the system in France. When I was trying to set up uh, a company, the first time, Phobos was not my first attempt. Uh, is this the third experience. I had a, a company, started with some French associates, which was in the direct line of my educational background, which was an environmental design company called MF Impact. And when I tried to come into the creation of this company, I was told that I didn't have the, ne the required uh, administrative uh, status to be uh, a manager in that company. I could only be a shareholder because I didn't yet have the French green card and I was with a temporary card. So it's something people here should know that you can't uh, be more than a shareholder in a French company here to register if you have only the temporary resident status. You will have to associate with somebody who has the green card or the nationality. That was the first stumbling block, but I managed to overcome it. And I managed finally to get my resident status and actually the French passport, which I have with the Nigerian passport too. So uh, that's history. Uh, so what I did was uh, uh, looking at where Nigeria continues to meet attention. And I said, this agri fair will help us. I think a lot of you were able to attend it at the Port of Versailles. They said it was a very big uh, project. And I think uh, we, will, we will let the elections, the conventions, all these issues that prevented our diaspora uh, chief in Nigeria to come here, uh, from coming here, uh, to pass. Then we will re-edit the, the participation of Nigeria in the agri fair in 2020. So that's my experience. I am a, a very active in bringing the French people and Nigerians to meet. There are lots of uh, requests for services in terms of risk management. Uh, when you're going to do business with Nigeria, the thing they think about, they, we have problems of security, so you, and we have problems of that image gap, that they think Nigerians are not people that are trustworthy, there is 419 going on, the first question they ask me is, is this person trustworthy? I have carried out a lot of business missions to investigate potential partners in Nigeria and write reports and tell the French potential partner that, that this is a worthy person. Uh, it, it's something it's called uh, you know, risk, risk management. I'm very, very uh, active there. I'm active in intelligence, uh, economic intelligence, uh, trying to identify opportunities both at this end and Nigerian end for people to take advantage of. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can we give a round of applause? That's like... Uh,
compressing. I don't know how many years or how many decades into three. It's over twenty years. <laughs> compressed. That's compressing. Twenty years is three minutes. Uh, that's great. So uh, Dr. Banoiga is uh, is also a board member of Friends of Nigeria, and he's been very supportive. He's got a rich chest of experience to connect with. So uh, join us to uh, reach out to him in our own private times and see how we can share, you can connect with some of the things he shares. Thank you again for that uh, presentation. Three minutes, the MD of uh, Batinovo Construction is also here. Mr. Aloy Uligbo will give us a quick, very succinct, um, share experiences, just in three minutes. Thank you. Uh, you're all welcome. Um, my name is uh, Olibo, uh, Chief Ol Aloy Olibo. I'm the owner of uh, Batinovo. We're into renovation, and also I'm the president of the State Association here in France. I think the, we don't have much time, but from, from your question, I think the, the question here is uh, how do we advise some of us what to do in order not to make some mistake that we did. Uh, personally, it's not easy, but I think uh, from yesterday we, we got a lot of uh, experiences about uh, uh, you need to have the coverage and you don't need to lose hope. Uh, one of our guys said, uh, he said, uh, go high and not to go home or what, something like that. You know? Go big or go home. Yeah, go big or go home, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I really like that anyway. So, so anyway, we personally, I started like ordinary, any other human being here, you know, that, that wanted to make uh, it out uh, through uh, the normal way. I worked for several times, uh, several years in Disneyland and um, uh, building construction, all these things is not really what I learned before. So. Uh, I just, uh, one day I decided to, because I checked the rentage of here in France, it's really lucrative. And um, um, if anybody want to, let me just say a particular thing that we used to do, which uh, most of our Nigerians does, is that we always focus in grabbing the money. Uh, generally, we always say we want to have it and then, and that's it. So, but not forgotten that you need to make a uh, thing, uh, you have to make the construction first. And the construction that will lead you to long distance, and this is what we're at looking for. So, I got the knowledge of doing this because, um, uh, you know, after, the, after being a tenant, and then when I'm moving, I live in Paris anyway, that was a long time ago, that was about uh, uh, two. Uh, to, um, 19, 2000, yeah, 2000, 2000, yeah, 2000, yeah, the year 2000, I left Paris, and then I bought a house in Disneyland, and then from there, I found out that, you know, renting is really, you know, throwing my money, and then I went into uh, getting my own property, and then 2005, I sold mine, and try to change another one. So the money I made there really surprised me, to tell you the truth. And then from there, I start going into, I went to school and then learn how to do the buildings and uh, renovation and then doing all those things. And since then, it's really working good. I, if, you, if any of you know where Concord is, uh, Concord here, we call it Jardin Itinerary. Oh, that's my turn, isn't it? <laughs> Okay. Uh, Jardin Itinerary. So, I, if you go there, I did a lot of renovation. Most of the uh, restaurants there, uh, Cité des Sciences. I did some renovation there, and then to just run everything up. I just want to tell any of our young ones: uh, don't lose hope, please. In anything you're doing, uh, don't just try to go the shortest way. If the longest way will take you one year, and you're sure that after one year it will last forever, go for that. That's the only advice I will give. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very inspiring story. Uh, something to learn from. Uh, he has a little a small brochure of interest and stretch, and you get one for yourself. Uh, we're going to have uh, Mr. Longi Agoha 
we found out that it's a tag, and we're going to pick it to a short work for us. Thank you. Well, make it very short. Um, my name is Nam Dagon, and um, I consider myself a linguist because I studied English in French in France. Uh, people are very surprised <laughs> to study English in France, but that's what I did. I studied English in France, and then I also studied French, and so uh, that had led me to teaching. That's the majority of what we do as a linguist. And um, so while teaching, I, that gave me some insights to, as to, because I wanted to know why do white people succeed? That was the first question I asked myself. Or why do not make many mistakes? That was the, 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 burning, the fire that was burning inside me. I wanted to know exactly why. And after teaching them for a while, I, I discovered that they were, they were not that very brilliant or they're not very more, more brilliant than the black people. So I started learning the tricks behind their success, so to say. Why do they succeed? And so that took me to discovering that one of the reasons why they, they, they don't fail or they keep on progressing is focus. I discovered they are very focused, and so I wanted to learn more. And so after teaching for about, say, 10 years, I went to do um, what I call personal development coaching so that I can transmit what I learned as a coach to people. Not only teaching English, I wanted to coach people on how to survive or succeed. And that um, brought me into teaching or coaching uh, personal development. And so for anybody who wants to make it here, I believe one of the best or the first things to do is to focus. One. Second, you need to know what you are aiming for. You can't aim for everything. You need to know your, your, your skill set. What is it? You can have master's or PhD, but you need to know exactly what you want to do. Then you have to offer people. If you don't know it, you will always, always make mistakes, or you might not succeed as much as you want. And so finding that thing that really makes you special, that's the first thing to do if you really want to succeed, because I discovered over time that Certificates alone, they have told us that education is good, but it's wonderful if you can convert education into. Already? <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, so uh, for anybody who really wants to succeed, please try to be focused and identify your skill set and work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you again for uh, Can that. I add one thing? No. Just, just just please. Uh, so we what we do is we do provide training programs for people who want to uh, do their business. We help you to identify your skill set and coach you to become successful. That's what we do. Thank you. Thank you. So, so if you're interested in what he does, please feel free to connect with him just immediately after this section. Before we go to the millennials, I want to ask you guys, uh, are you millennials? <laughs> <laughs> they are not. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. <laughs> okay. Um, well, <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't want to try to investigate the age. So I'm going to have the younger, two younger generations, I would say, I don't need to say that. The old ones have finished, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have um, Shem Ola B and uh, Jolade to give a brief three minutes or so of how the journey has been like. I know you just started. I know you're just testing the waters. How's it been like? Because the plan is to encourage more of us to not, to be an, uh, to, to, to be an employee is not a bad thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but we believe that we can also 
beyond taking a career path, some of us can develop enterprises. Uh, one of their own story yesterday was very, very inspiring. You know, it's having about over 40 staff. I've gone to visit, FON has gone to visit my board time in his office. Over 40 staff in his office. Turnover of, I don't know, three plus million euros, you know. So that's something that is inspiring, really. And I think it was part of what President Macron said during the trip to Nigeria in the home that um, the theft to the Nibelu Hall then were there and it was mentioning things like, it's not just France coming to do investment. There should be a debate, uh, there should be a yeah, you know? So we can also create wealth in this, uh, this land. So please, uh, show you go quickly three minutes. How's the journey? You are in France, I know, you reported, <laughs> but I asked him like. Um, so my name is Sean. Uh, I won't bore you with my story, but um, uh, I'll just give you a brief background. In 2017, January, I had just returned from a business school in Silicon Valley. And um, we, we applied for something by the, called the Friend Tech Ticket, and we were selected. 2,000 companies applied, 70 companies were selected, um, two African companies, and we were one of the African companies. And I had, we had two weeks to move to France, basically. It was a French government thing, so it was a sponsored trip, and we got our visas very quickly. And we moved to France, and for me, before, before now, after school, I started a company. Um, we had about 10 people already on our payroll. It was doing really well. Um, but for me, when we got the opportunity, I convinced my, you know, my co-founder, I was like, okay, you know what, um, I know we're doing you know, pretty well, but I think it's a very nice opportunity, just because you know, we're relatively young, and this is the time when, uh, you know, out of every other time to really go and take chances. And I consider myself to be what I, what I call a nation builder at large. I'm very passionate about Nigeria. I've always been passionate about Nigeria. But I'm also passionate about we changing the narratives about Nigeria. So uh, my personal assignment isn't really running a company as, 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 as well as it's fine. You know, I'm very passionate about we changing our stories, our, the Nigerian story in itself. Last year, again, we got an investor um, based in the Netherlands, and then they convinced us to, um, to move to, the, to, to Amsterdam, actually, because it's a very interesting market. So, and then I had some background in advertising. So I moved to Amsterdam last year. I've spent my first year in Amsterdam as at, I think, this week or so. And in the, in the last one year, uh, we've, we've gotten like, tons of contracts. We do work for the, um, the largest um, telecommunications company in the Netherlands, which is KPN. We've done campaigns for Nestle. We've run a lot of very interesting campaigns. And what Unity said, like, like everybody has said it before, is Nigerians aren't, so like what Mr. Longi said, is Nigerians aren't different from anybody else. Value is universal. Forget about the fact that you're a black man or you, you, your, your accent is not that good and everything. There's time to really onboard, but value, like I said, always brings you a key and brings you somewhere in the table. So I'm, I'm always in rooms with executives, all like Dutch, they're speaking Dutch really. So when they come to my side, they have to speak English. You know, I have to present them in English, but in the end, we've been able to really work hard and try and push our value to these guys. And it's been very, very, um, it's been very rewarding for, for, for the most part. So I really enjoyed uh, my journey. Um, so what, what we do basically is we, we help what we call, we help brands build what, we, what they call tribes. Um, tribes of what we call hyper fans. Hyper fans means like hyperactive fans. The idea is there's a lot of, there's a lot of like content being thrown out to marketing content and everything nowadays. But what we do is we help brands, startups and bigger brands that are launching new products, get their fan base. It's like if, if you've heard of influencer marketing, it's Okay, finally, yeah, I'll be done in, I'll be done in five seconds. So if, if you've heard of influencer marketing, it's like a big brand working with someone that has a million followers. But what we do is we help brands activate. Um, if you want to work with 5,000 people in social media, you come to us. If you want to work with five influencers, you don't need us. But if you want to work with 5,000 small creators on campaigns, we build the software that does the entire, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, thank you so much for your, for your time. I appreciate your... So your activity is uh, yes. internet based? Yes, yes. Uh, internet based. Yes, it's an advertising technology product. Brand. Marketing, yeah, marketing <coughs> and advertising. So MadTech, yeah. We're the net system. MadTech, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So quickly, we'll have um, Jaladi give you, give you experience in three minutes or less, and then uh, we'll have the Q&A section, and we'll be done with this for the next one. Thank you. Right. I speak really fast. My name is Joradi. Um, I at last a lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I'm a mobile financial services consultant by day, 
when I'm working, I work with Orange, and also right now a boarding entrepreneur. So I'm building a brand in conjunction with um, Lei Aritano, he's not here, and it's called ONG. It's literally a lifestyle brand aimed at promoting Nigerian culture within Nigeria and beyond as well. So what we do is to help people, I mean to introduce people to, to Nigerian culture, mostly food, literature, technology. So one of the things that we do um, is first of all, one of um, the products that we have here called Mama Food Box. So what it is is really a set of Nigerian food ingredients and say pe to people that you can make whatever it is that you want with them. So we all know Egusi and what we do with Egusi is to make soup, right? But I mean, it's so rich in protein and oils that you can replace your meat and your eggs with Egusi. So about two day, on Tuesday like this week, we held an event at um, Maison Chateau Rouge, it's a fashion brand in Paris. And what we did was we made Egusi quiche we made um, basically pie, yeah, and uh, really served it to French people. And they were all over it like, oh my goodness, this is so good. What does this do? Where can I get this? And we, we had the products right there and there so they could just buy. We served Gary with coconut milk. We had our uh, plantain flour cake. So it's literally to say the food that we eat is not strange. It's something that you can use universally with due respect, take it, create something new with it and learn about how we live as well. So I think it's what we do, what we're doing right here is to create a culture to say Nigerian culture is not strange. And even on weekends as well, I host people from different parts of the world at home and I cook Nigerian food to them. We we'll listen to Nigerian music, we read Nigerian books. So even at the event, someone said, oh, Gary, I read it in Chimamanda's book. That for us is what we are here to do. So um, thank you very much. So far my journey has been uh, rewarding. It hasn't been easy, especially in France because the culture is very, very different. You have to be uh, brave, courageous, believe in yourself and um, don't just say no, don't give up because for Ni Nigerians, are, for us, yes, it's usually the first thing. In France, usually they say no to you first, but push hard and um, also be open to learning about their culture. Thank you. Great story, great story. Uh, I'm very timely. You yeah. know she did. Uh, she just made a perfect pitch. Uh, every other person beats three minutes. You did other things. She that she's the minutes. only lead. <laughs> <laughs> that's she makes you speak very fast. <laughs> that's I didn't think she was very fast. Usually they say she was very fast. Yeah, they say ladies talk very too much. <laughs> 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 but she did the guys. She, she said uh, even the embassy of. I think they should call him if they can. Uh, the embassy of, um, of France and Nigeria have been sponsored for youth together. Because the idea for us is we don't just want to, if anyone has read the book Startup Nation by Paul Singer, um, the idea in, 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 in Israel is every entrepreneur is first a nation builder. You're a nation builder and you're an entrepreneur at the same time. So every time you go out and you flag, hoist the flag of your business, you also hoist the flag of your country. You know, so that's the idea. We must be able to understand that it's good to mind your business, but mind your country also. And if God wanted you to be, I don't know, in France and be born in France, he would have. But there's a reason why you have a shoot uh, from, from Nigeria. So if you don't mind, that is basically what the Indians, the Chinese, the Jews, the Israelis. Okay. That's what everybody says. Okay, that, that's it, you see? So they go we, with the flag of the country on one side, I carry your and they go with the business on the other hand. So I think we, it's not new, it's not novel, so we have a responsibility to be that country. So please, from all the stories that we shared today, I'd like us to multiply that story in uh, the next edition of Spotlight. We want to have more entrepreneurs coming out from our midst, more people that can build great businesses that will not only be sort of subsistent income for yourself, but will also create job employment. One of us got an, uh, a place at Derwin recently, you know? So you see? It's a Nigerian company. Nigerians are getting places there. That's the idea, because we can be strong for each other. So uh, we'll take a few questions before the next uh, roundtable on the CCEF section would start. Um, Bedu has something to say. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Oh, I, you, you, Mr. Super, you're supposed to we'll give a comment. You're on the, on the camera. OK, we'll have a comment in three minutes, just uh, okay. to share. Um, the key on my not called. And sorry, that's okay. because. The next session is to start now, Three and we have the French companies already doing business. They're now around, and okay. they took a lot of they took a lot of effort to bring them here. So I'm going to crave our indulgence to, if we can wait after their session, F1 continues. 
Also, but I have, if you don't have your records with us, it's nice that you also drop your contact details. We have a very broad network, not just on WhatsApp, but also on mailing list. And you have no idea what goes on in that network. There's something about you posting an information, and a group of over 150 professionals answer you. Even though you get your answers cheaply, it comes from a robust network of people with experience and everything. So it's the power of the network. Any, I used to tell my colleagues that any problem that cannot survive our contact, Dr. Emmanuel's contact, the ambassador's contact, my contact, business contact, then there's no solution for that problem. So the truth is that there's any problem you have in France related to business studies or professional, it can be solved in that platform. We have people who are entrepreneurs, people who are into academia, people who are also doing a professional life. So I'm going to create a list to just give us your email and be part of that group. But in the next two, three minutes, I'll create an to just um, kindly step out so we can rearrange this place. But it's also open to everyone, so we can allow the French CEOs come in. And then if you still want to tap into their network, I mean, the knowledge to see how they've been successful in Nigeria will be also um, beneficial for you. So um, if you don't mind, we just want to rearrange this Questions, place. answers, continues after the, after the section. After.